Hello again, everybody. It's Heath Robinson with Topaz Labs. I'm always excited to welcome back Joe Reardon to present another awesome webinar with us again. Before we begin, I'd like to tell some of the new people about Joe as well as give you some technical tips about the presentation. Uh, Joe Reardon is a New Hampshire-based freelance photographer, workshop leader, and instructor. He's a juried artist at the New Hampshire Art Association, the Plymouth Center for the Arts, the South Shore Art Association, Rockport Art Association, and he's one of only 15 photographers to be accepted into the Copley Society of Art. Am I saying that right, Joe? Copley. Copley. Copley Society of Art. Yep. The oldest gallery in the U.S. Uh, he regularly leads workshops and software training in and around the New England area, and he has his work displayed in both the U.S. Senate and U.S. Congress. Uh, all right. So, uh, afternoon, everybody. Um, I hope the audio is coming in all right. Today we had a little problem with the headset, and we're doing this through a uh, cell phone today. So, bear with me if it uh, fades in and out, and the heat will give you a heads up if it's, it's not in the fade, and I'll speak louder. Um, this particular photograph, we're going to try and show you how to add a little bit of drama and impact to your photos using Studio and, uh, and in one case, a plug-in from um, Topaz as well. And I've got something to show you on focus stacking through Photoshop uh, as well, which I've been doing an awful lot lately. This particular image is an Eastern State Penitentiary in uh, Philadelphia, and it was shot with a, a 200 millimeter lens and it was focus stack. So this is multiple images and I blended them together in Photoshop and then brought them into Topaz Studio to finalize it. When I've done <clears throat> in preparation for all of this uh, webinar, I created an awful lot of presets. So I'm gonna click on this particular preset and it's the East State Penitentiary one. And so you can see what it looks like and we're gonna build this from scratch, but there's an awful lot that goes into this uh, as far as what we want the final look to be. As you can see, this is where I started um, by holding down the space bar, and this is where we ended up. I kind of wanted to draw your eye straight down that tunnel uh, view and out to the windows at the end with the two shining lights um, in the hallway down below with the benches. So we'll begin this. We'll remove all of these, and hopefully we'll come up with the exact same look uh, today. So we're going to start out with the basic adjustments here. Just a couple of uh, changes here. I'm going to increase the shadow or open it up a little bit to about 30, 32, 35, around that range here. And then I'm going to press the highlights on the negative to tone that down just a bit. And everything is always seasoned to taste. So whatever your particular style is and what you like. So then I'm going to add a little bit of precision contrast in here to try and get that particular look. One of my favorites is precision contrast. Two that I like. Um, the micro, we'll bring that up a little bit here, 25, 30, 30 ish. And then the low one, we'll bring up about half the way across. And that's kind of a, uh, what I like to do is wherever I bring the micro, the uh, low one I bring about halfway to get a look that I like. And then the mid tones I'm gonna bring up just a hair. And that'll make this image just a bit lighter, just a bit lighter, not too, too much. Next step for this particular photograph, we're going to come into precision, precision, easy for me to say, detail. And I like, like most things, I don't want you to know that I've done a lot of editing to it. So it's, everything is gentle, gentle, gentle. It's kind of like too much perfume, it, you know, just enough if it's the right smell and, and too much it, it really does. Work. So gentle. I try and use the subtle sharp preset that Topaz has created just to give it a very, very fine uh, look here. I'll press the space bar again so you can see where we've started, where we're at, at this particular moment and nothing over the top so far. So now the next step on this particular one, we're going to go into HSL. We're going to try and change some of the, uh, the find it here, the color tuning. We have a lot of these in here, and sometimes it's uh, difficult to remember where everything is. There it is, HSL. So I know in this one we've got an overall. I'm going to turn the saturation up just a hair. 
I don't want to go over the top. You can see the change already between where it was to where it is. There's before, there's after. We're going to turn that up for brightness just, just a little bit. Very little. Yeah, not too, too much. So now one of my other favorites is uh, going with a tone curve. I hope everybody's using um, curves adjustments in their uh, process because it really does make a dramatic difference in how the image looks. Um, as far as when you're building it for a little bit more impact, this really does attack the contrast on the image. You can bring the midtones down to see what's happening here. Always play, play, play until you get the look you want on your particular one. And I like just the gentle S curve on most of my images. And what I've gotten to do a lot lately with uh, these type of images, we see a lot of grit in the image. I want to make it a little bit stronger. And what we've got in Topaz uh, is these edges, which is going to bring the edges up just a little bit and make it a little bit stronger so that you don't want to go too, too far. Uh, in fact, in this one I will, I'll make it strong. And you can see the difference where we're going to go up just a little bit and see the difference between what the original is. Now I'm starting to bring out what you see here. And I'm going to suppress these just a little bit, bring that down. So we grit a little bit more grit. And that's how I felt with this particular scene as I felt the, the grittiness. And so not a lot has to be done to these to make the impact or make them a lot more impact. Um, one last step on this particular one. We're going to add a vignette. Now I'm going to see you drive it right into this area right through here. And we've gotten a little bit dark here, but I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. Hey, Joe. I don't want too much. Yeah. Uh, if you could speak up just a little bit, we're having a couple people complain that it's a little quiet. Yep, not a problem. Uh, let me know when I'm yelling too much. Okay, and then but, uh, uh, when you finish, a before and after, please. Yes, of course, of right. course. Thank you. And again, uh, everything here always is seasoned to taste because no two photographs are going to be exactly alike. So, but these are the tools that you would use to drive a little bit more impact into your image. Um, not too, too, too overdone, but just enough. And that's where it started. And this is where we're, we've ended up. I think I've made a dramatic difference in the uh, quality of the image and the impact of the image just with these few changes. You can see some of the color changes here with the overall saturation coming up. And you can see a lot of the highlights coming along the railing here. And it's along in here as well. And we're focusing your eye by making your eye come right into the center section here while still keeping these highlights along the side here. And I would be very pleased to put this on any gallery wall. So we'll start again with the uh, image number two. Let's open this up. And we're going to, this is a stacked photo. I did a about a five or six uh, image stack, a focus stack, and I'll be showing you that on the next image where we've um, blended that image into Photoshop. Let me show you again what we've done with the preset, and then we'll go back and build it by hand. I like to keep the presets uh, because a lot of times um, the images are very similar in, in a certain particular location. And it gives you a chance to start in the beginning. As you can see, what we've done through this particular image to make this look a little bit more impactful, I'll press the space bar. And this is something I like to teach my students that you don't necessarily have to shoot everything of that image to know that it's what the object is. In this particular case, I just focused in on this little point here and then. You could clearly see for those older folks like me that took shop class back in junior high school, this is what we used to do to make prints and paper, uh, newspaper. 
all done by hand. And uh, this was just a fascinating place to be in photograph. So we'll start this one right from the beginning. As we can see, this is where I'm starting. So go back into basic, which is where I like to start off always and make some, just some minor adjustments. We're gonna open up the shadows just a little bit because you can see the lighting is coming in from here. This, is, this particular location is all window light. So it's long exposures and just uh, natural light coming in. So it's all, all lots of shadows and harsh shadows, as you can see here. So we're not trying to uh, change it to make it look flat. We just wanted to make some impact here. So highlight, we're gonna bring down a little bit to get rid of these hot spots as much as possible on the side here. And again, for my interiors, what I'm finding that really does really make a big difference is the edges. And just a little bit goes a long way with the edges. And we're just gonna bring this up just a little bit, scotch. And again, suppress the weak edges a little bit, um, just to get a little bit more impact on all of the surface areas here, where it's, it's going to make it look and appear sharper for you as well. So next we'll go into HSL, because this was uh, an, an area where we got mixed mixed coloring from the walls. So I want to change that a little bit. HSL, tuning, and we're gonna take down the red and the orange just a little bit. Take the saturation down just the hair and bring the brightness up just a hair as well. As you can see, as you hover over your square box for the particular color that's in there, you're gonna see for the on your screen, I hope you can see it on mine, where you're gonna get a cross-hatch look of how much color is saturated on that particular uh, area in the uh, image. So we're gonna go for this one, and it was very strong with red and very strong with the uh, orange just because of the wall colors. We're gonna bring this up just a bit. So take the saturation down so it's not so overwhelmingly powerful with the orange and the red. And we'll go to the micro contrast, or the precision contrast once, once again. And again, I like to be very gentle um, with my approach to my uh, photography. I want you to know that it uh, it really doesn't look over overcooked, if you will. And we're going to bring this up just a little bit here. Usually, a two to one ratio for me is what I like with the micro and the low. And then we're going to bring the uh, medium and the mid tone up, medium down just a hair, the high down just a bit. We've got some highlights over here. We'll bring that mid-tone up just a bit to make it a little bit lighter. Just a little bit. I just want to be able to see a little hint of what's going on in with this table and not uh, block it up so much. I tend to put it in equalization of high. I find it gives me a little bit better look. And then again, my go-to for details, even though we've put the uh, edges in there, I still like the precision detail a lot. Again, you could play with the presets. You could change the shadows, the highlights, each one individually. The look that I, I want, and this one, I've, and I've tested it, I, I go back to my go-to, which is the subtle sharp, and you can see the difference. I'll turn that one on and off again, so you can see this with it on, and this with it off. Just gentle. You can see a little bit of change through here and here, and a little bit in the typeface just by turning that on and off. Not too much. You can see a little bit of the grain in the wood through here, through here, and the typeface is coming in very nice. And you can see some of the reflections in the colors of the walls here from the, the window light that's coming in on the top left, and it's reflecting the wall colors in through here. It was such an amazing place being in here with the, uh, five or six of these old-time presses and boxes and boxes and boxes of these uh, pieces of type that somebody has to actually put together uh, in a uh, palette and uh, create a newspaper article. So the next one, again, we'll go to my tone curve. 
And again, you can make dramatic changes in this if you need to, want to, as you can see, just by dressing this. I typically like to do just a, a small S curve, just to add a little bit of contrast and not a lot, just a little. I know that there's defaults here. You can, you can try and I'll show you, decrease, increase blue, increase contrast. None of those particular ones work for me on this particular. So I added my own here, here, and then I'll, I used to go to that corner point there and I'll just make a nice S curve adjustment from there. And if I need to, I will open up the mid, mid tones just a little bit while those two, um, the toe and the curve, uh, anchor it. We can open up just a little bit here. You see the difference between pushing that up a little and not pushing it up. Lastly, uh, on this one, I want your eye going right here. This is this is what I think tells the story of what this particular item is. So I want you to be drawn to it. To add a little bit more impact. So we're going to go for a vignette. I'm very um, pleased with the vignettes, and we can make the strength strong. And we can drop it down just to give you a little bit of um, direction of where I want your eye to go. I can make the size a little bit bigger so it's now just out at the far edges. So this is where I would want you to go. So let me show you what we started with the before. Master. Gentle, very gentle. You don't need a whole lot of uh, over the top adjustments to get your uh, impact and then your statement into your photograph. I tend to watch uh, painters and how they uh, layer and layer and layer all of their paints to make their images pop. And I try and recreate the same effect through uh, my editing and post editing, post process editing with the uh, topaz. So this one will be, next one will be kind of our shakeability again. So let me show you the before effect. And then we'll do the after. And there's one extra thing I want to show you here. This is the Canterbury barrel. And I'm going back to this week, so I'm going to reshoot this particular one. But this is what it looks like with all of the adjustments that I've made to it. Now, I mentioned earlier that I do a lot of focus stacking. So in this particular one, I started my focus stack here. And another one, another one, another one. Unfortunately, I bought the, uh, the Nikon D850, which just allows me to do it right in the camera without uh, touching it. The old fashioned way was uh, touching the camera and refocusing at each location. And then ended up moving the camera um, every time, even just so much, a little bit. So we always had to leave an extra room here just so when we aligned it, it uh, would leave enough area so things wouldn't get cut off. Let me bring you up Photoshop. We've already done it. Now this, because the fi my file size is so big, it takes me about five minutes to do this much. But the process, walk you through, you bring them all in to Photoshop as layers. However many they are, sometimes there's five, sometimes there's 10, sometimes there's 20, depending on what you're after for that particular image. And then you bring it in and you do auto align, first step. And then the next step, after everything is like you grab them all, you've highlighted them, you do auto align. The next step is to do auto blend. And it's gonna blend, and what we've got here is it's taking the sharpest point from each photograph and masking out, automatically masking out everything. And the last thing that's left is the merge layer. So what you do here is just flatten it, and then you can begin your editing process in Topaz with this one. So that's what I've brought in here to uh, Topaz was the final version. And we'll start this one over again. Let's see if we can build this right from the go. So my uh, my post process uh, typically is in studio. Um, I will use Lightroom for my database and very, very, very minor tweaks. Sometimes to open up the shadows and tone down highlights, but and and maybe crop. But 
I, I just use it typically just for a database. And I'm, I'm doing all of my post processing within uh, Topaz Studio and all uh, the plugins and a little bit if I need to with the focus stacking in Photoshop. Nothing different than what you, you folks are normally doing. So we're gonna bring this one up. And each image, um, it's just gonna require you to try and get the best story out of it that you can. And if you, what I tried to do is shoot for post. Uh, it's a different concept, I guess. And I, if I know what my post processing is capable of doing, I try and shoot it in a manner which will bring out the most of my image in post processing. So in this particular case, I just didn't want any of this background here. So I shot for the post process where it would create a, a dark image here. And again, just doing the focus stacking, there was a nice window light coming from across here. So I used it to the best advantage I could as far as um, selecting the f-stop and the uh, shutter speeds and always with the tripod. None of this um, uh, ever is handheld for me. I can't remember the last time I was shot without a tripod. So we're going to go to basic again and start that up. Now, I am really like it, so I don't want this opened. I want that to remain dark. I want the, the, the side of it to look round, and that's what this image with the darkness is, is doing here. I'm going to bring up the clarity just a little bit. Yeah, not much. Because I have metal in here and wood, so I want a little bit of that to pop for me. Uh, open up shadows just a hair, really just a hair, not over the top. I mean, you could bring them. That's over the top. And this is kind of like in between, right around here, just so you can continue to see the curve there. And then it becomes too flat if you open it up too, too, too much. Highlight I'm going to bring down. This is just a little too hot for me on this side. It will bring that highlight down just a bit so it's not so over overdone. You can see up here in the histogram, I'm, I'm off to the left. I don't always follow the rules of shooting to the right or shooting to the left. You shoot what the scene calls for. And that's what this one seems to need. And so we'll bring the black level down just a bit. I really want those shadows to pop a little bit. Bring the white level down. And that'll get rid of some of those highlights on the left here. This one took me a little bit longer to do, obviously, because of the focus stacking and the lighting we had in here. And now we'll go to precision contrast. You can probably guess my workflow is very similar uh, over and over for my interior work uh, with just some minor adjustments for each one. And it seems to, it works for me. So we'll come up here. We'll jack up the micro contrast about out there, 35. And again, like I said, it's always for me, it's about a two to one ratio. So I'm going to come down about halfway here, halfway ish, not exact, but halfway ish. We're going to bring the highlights down just a bit because we're still a little hot up here in the corner. But now I want it to be a little bit uh, softer there, if you will, or flatter. And we're going to bring the Midtones up just a skosh. Bring the low, medium down just a little bit. Everyone or every image calls for its own special tweak. Again, I like to go on the high. So all set with the precision contrast. I'm going to show you the before and after so far. You can see the details coming out in the barrel itself. You see the uh, the uh, stain, the barrel stain is coming up a little bit more. So it's 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 becoming a uh, a focal point for me now. Ethan, are you still hearing me all right? I hope. It's our first time with the phone. Yes, sir. You sound great. Great, good, good, good. So we've got the contrast on, and, and and again, as I. Um, generally always do with uh, interior structures where I want the grit to come up. This has got some nice edges to it that I want highlighted and draw your eye to it. So I'm going to add the edge strength here. And um, if you don't have this, um, this is in Simplify. Um, 
in the plug-in side. So, so I t tend to make the small ones just a little bit under. We'll show you the difference. I hope it's very subtle, and it is. You can see this is before everything, and this is after. I don't like to do over the top on anything. Everything is always just a little bit gentle. And we're gonna get rid of some of the um, the color in here. This is uh, a little distracting for me. So we'll just change a few things here. Uh, yellow, green, as you can see, orange, yellow, I'm gonna bring it down and bring the lightness up a little bit. Not so much there. Here, the orange saturation is just a little heavy. And you don't need to take too much out. Bring a little bit of lightness in there. The red has got a long, strong cast on it, so we're going to bring that down just a little bit. And you'll see me in some places, I actually increase the um, hue and saturation, um, well, the saturation of it in some of these photographs. I think we're good, all of these. Everything else is just minor. So I'm looking to get that overall color cast removed. So I'm good here. And then I'm gonna put something that I typically don't put on an interior shot, but in this case it actually worked. I did a little testing on it and a little bit of dehaze, just a little. So don't be afraid to experiment is uh, I guess the point I'm trying to make here that uh, just because you think dehaze is for exterior shots, eh, not always, just experiment. So we got two little pieces left of this. Let me show you where we are and where we were before. And you can see I'm bringing out the feel of that barrel, I think, with some of the changes I've made so far and really not over the top. So we're going to go to the next step in this particular one. And we're going to go to precision detail because this has got a lot of nuance uh, areas in here and in here. And obviously we've got some of the metal that are uh, pieces that are inside of this little box, this little cubby box. And I really want to bring out some of this a little bit more. But, so we'll go to my go-to, which is subtle sharp. I'll show you the before and after on this. So we'll turn that off. You can see it's not much. It's just not much, but enough. Sorry, the wrong one. Just a little bit. I hope you can see that just a, just a little bit. I'll do an overall before and after. And I'm bringing out the gray and a little bit of this structure that's on top of the barrel and some of these uh, little instruments inside of the case here. And we've got the one last thing here that I want to put to this. It's not a signature look for me, I guess, but it is something that I like to add in a lot. Um, I'm going to turn the strength down on this because I don't want it that hot or that much. And I'm going to increase the size because I want it going out to the edge, not so much Completely. If you go to the size and you drag it down, it's going to make it way too much, and it's just going to be just a center foot. So I like to bring it out. In this particular case, it's uh, going out to beyond the standard default one. In the strength, I'm turning it down. The transition you can change just a little bit, and that basically is the um, hard edge, if you will, going from um, black to not black, it, and this will make the, the edges softer from the transition point of the vignette. So we'll show you the, the the beginning and where we ended up with. All right, good. Number four. And this is going to be a little bit complicated because this is a, a, a merge on the next one. And we're going to start with here. Um, let me show you the finished product and then we'll try and build it. I did make uh, presets for all of these, called them what they were. 
So as you can see, this is one of two images that I took down at Eastern State Penitentiary. I went down there about a month ago on a uh, scouting trip and fell in love with the place. If you've never been, it's, it's worth the trip and the visit to go. And you can see the difference between where we started. And this is actually two images blended together because I wanted to have two different exposures and I wanted that red chair. And this is the infamous red chair that everybody shoots when they're at Eastern State, but I wanted mine to look just a little bit different than everybody else. And so I did a multiple exposure and then blended together through a topaz here. And I'll go through the whole process here of what we did. All right, so then we're back to the original one. And we're going to change the, the basic exposure. And we're going to bring this down just a little bit. Just a little. Right there. And we bring clarity up. Just a little bit because it calls for it. And we're going to open up shadows just a little bit. Maybe about there. Right, while I turn the page on my notes. And we're going to change the white level because I want these to pop a little bit more. We're going to make the white level plus 22, 25, somewhere around here. I want these white arms of this barber chair to give me a little bit more oomph as I'm trying to custom craft this particular image. So we're going to add a position contrast to this next, and then we're going to bring in uh, one more, and then we'll bring in the next image and do a little bit of blending. Again, micro contrast, I, I typically always go with micro, and not too much. I mean, you really, you can get that over the top look and it's not pleasing for me. Just want to be able to make an adjustment here and not have you know what type of adjustment was done. So we'll bring this up just a little bit more. And again, we'll come about halfway. This has always been my rule of thumb about the low being about halfway. And then we're going to bring in a tone curve. Again, just a little bit of S curve. And you can see I always grab it right by the corners here and add a little bit here. And sometimes drag it down if I need to. It makes it darker, but sometimes not. Sometimes I want those highlights to pop. Sometimes in the middle, just a hair. There we go. Just a little. Curves are your friends with uh, being able to add contrast in, in where you want it in the highlights and in the you know, deep shadows. So now we're going to add a layer, the other layer, to 17, which is this one. And I'm going to put it in the background. And this was shot with a different exposure. I'll put a stop different when I initially made this. And we're going to, first of all, we're going to make some changes with this one. With basic. And we're going to make some adjustments here. It's negative 11, 12, somewhere around there. And then open up that shadow a bit. I've already added the clarity into the other one. So we'll open up the shadow here on this one. Edges, I'm going to come up. The key, I think, in, in, in my opinion with this is just experiment and see what you can come up with, with uh, all of the sliders and all of the tools that are in front of you. Uh, there are no rules. Everything is custom, customizable to your particular taste and what you're trying to say with your image. So I'm hoping I'm imparting a little bit of uh, my experience of, of how to add some drama and some impact into your uh, photographs to make them stand out from everybody else's. So here we're going to change the HSL. Now this is where you're going to see where I'm going to make that red here just a little bit redder. So I'm going to increase that up just a bit. And I want it to be separated from the whites in the um, the chair, the seat of the chair. I'm going to bring that lightness up just, just a little bit right there. And then 
Last but not least, we're going to put a vignette here. And I think this would finalize this one here. And as you can see, it now almost looks like it's a, a spotlight. I know in this this particular prison cell, the lights are up at the top of the ceiling here. They're not really lights, they're just skylights. that are uh, protects the inmates from the uh, the rain and everything, but it, it does shine the light through. And that was the effect I wanted to go here. You can see the shadow area. So I wanted to highlight that and have this look like it was coming down uh, and isolating it. So we will adjust the strength on this, maybe a little bit more, just to bring you in there. The size of it, actually, I might make a little smaller. Right about there, transition, I'm gonna turn up a little bit. Around this is fine, and I, I'm real happy with the centering of where this is. So let me show you where we started. Now keep in mind this is a two image blend. And this is where we started. Big difference between a flat raw file and a finalized image. But this was the look I wanted here. I wanted it to be almost spotlight, uh, like there was a spotlight on that uh, particular barber's chair. Hopefully, it made it a little bit different than everybody else. This is a very famous uh, stop in the Eastern State Penitentiary in uh, Philadelphia. Um, so we'll do this one too. This was a set of pants that we found. I'm not sure if it was left there or somebody planted it there, but they were there and it was asking me to take a picture of it, so I did. And I have some here, and one of them is just called pants. So we can see the difference between, yeah, where we started, and I'll um, I'll take this off so we can have a better picture, and where we ended up with. So this is the before, and it kind of looked a little flat, not so flat anymore. So I'm showing a little bit of the grit of the cell block, and the pants are exploding. I love this as a foreground element uh, for shooting. And it also has the spotlight look coming in off of this uh, um, piece of equipment that's in the back of the cell with the, uh, it looks like sawdust in here. So let's, let's start and build this. And we'll go from there. So again, we'll go to basic with the basic adjustment. And we'll take some uh, exposure adjustments and we'll go a little bit on the downside right around there and we're going to bring the clarity up just a hair we don't want to go over top because then ends up being a very grungy hdr yuck look here going too much so again just gentle 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 and you'll get the look you want if you like i said shoot for process i should propose so we'll turn the black level down just a bit. So I'm going to get those shadows to be very prominent underneath here. I want that to be prominent and behind here. And we'll leave the white level alone. So next step, precision contrast. And I think, uh, and I'll repeat it again, experiment, experiment, experiment. And that's the only way you're going to find out what um, the software will do for you in different images. And then when you get so comfortable with it, then you can start shooting for the process or the post and knowing, knowing what Topaz can do for you. And you can make your adjustments with your exposures to get the most out of uh, what Topaz can give you. And that's kind of what we're trying to show you here today. So we're gonna bring the micro contrast up just a little bit more than normal here, somewhere in the 45-ish range, because I do want this fractured cement wall um, pieces to come out here, about half the distance. And then we're gonna make the black level just a little bit. Sorry, shadow 17, uh, just bring that out a little bit. Yeah, the low on high, medium just a bit. Uh, 
not too much. And you can type these in, I just grab it and drag it. I'm not using the Wacom tablet today, just using the mouse. And then we're going to come into HSL. Actually, one more. I want the mid tone to come up just a bit. Right about there. What that did is it made this area with the sawdust and this lighted area come up and be a little bit brighter for me because it'll, it'll you'll see in the end when we put the uh, other features to this that this will actually look spotlighted for you. So next step, we're going to make HSL. You know, and I use this all the time. I always forget where it is in the menu. <laughs> so I'm going to go red. You can see that it's it's pretty saturated with red in there. So I'm going to bring that down just a little bit. And I'm going to bring the lightness up just a hair. Not too, too much, but just a hair. I got both loader notes and I'm going through them. So we're going through. What we see here, we've got orange, and I don't want that cast in there, so we'll we'll drag that down just a little bit, and the brightness will bring up just a hair as well. Just want to try to get rid of the uh, overall cast. So, not too much. And as you click through it, you can see the uh, crosshairs of um, cross hatch, if you will, on the uh, image of where it's uh, oversaturated uh, in one particular color. So as you click through them, you can see if you need to change something at all. So we're we're all right there. So we're going to add another adjustment here, um, edges, because it's an interior structure for me, and I think it does set uh, your image apart from everybody else's if you tend to, you know, gravitate towards using this, and, and just gently though. Just gently. If you go over the top, it's going to have a heavy edge and it's not going to look normal or natural, but just gentle. And we will actually go up a little bit more on this one. Around there, drop this down just to here, get rid of the weak ones just a little bit. Next step, one of my favorites. I've been using S curves for ever. We'll put a point here and here. Now I'm going to bring a little bit of contrast into this. Bring this down a little bit. And you can see what's happening here is this is now becoming a um, very spotlit look just by this change here. Um, I'm going to go back to something um, that I didn't do. And we're going to go to the blue because I want those pants. Have a little bit more blue in them. Maybe just bring it up. So increase the saturation in what what appears to be prison blue jeans. So if you make a mistake, you can always go backwards and uh, make your adjustments in any of these. So the turves are good, and I will put a vignette. As you can see, we're going to make some adjustments here because I really want this to be the focal point and have your eye go here this the the triangle if you will this um the rule of uh, twos threes fours to fives and, and this has got a rule of three in here so it's going to bring you here 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 or here 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 and it's going to bring you back all the circles so this is where i really want you to have your eye drawn to so we're going to bring this in a little bit more we're going to bring the size actually down just a hair from its default, not too much. The transition will bring up so it becomes a softer edge from one to the other. And I'm after a, a gritty look here, as you can see from the, it's a cement wall and an old dirt floor. We've got some, it looks like sawdust in the back here and the light definitely is coming in from the top. So I'm kind of trying to find a way to make that look more of a spotlight coming down on this this object in the back. Hey, Joe, just a heads up, yeah. we got 15 minutes about. Uh, all right, good. we got plenty of time here. i got one last change I'm going to do, and I'm going to go back to HSL. 
So you don't necessarily have to do it all at once. And this one is going to be overall. I'm just going to increase the saturation just too much right there. But I wanted the a pop right through here. And the gray, no, it's no longer gray. You've got the, this is before. And this is after. And I think you can see that there's a dramatic difference of putting some impact to this photo um, all through Topaz Studio. And it really doesn't take all that time. But again, if you if you see the vision before you shoot it, you can shoot it for your post-processing. And it's just practice, practice, practice. So we'll finish this one. I would say that was this one is particularly done. And I had another one marked off. Bear with me. I'm trying to finish this up with the uh, one last one. All right, we're going to try something here. This one may be a little bit difficult, but we'll get it anyway. So we've got a basic adjustment of some redwood trees. I hope you can still hear me here. And we're going to add a little bit more softness to this and maybe a little bit of glow in through here. And um, hopefully it'll simulate uh, a, a painterly look. So here, I'm just going to make a few adjustments and then we're going to save that. And then I'm going to bring it into a plugin, which I hope at some point that the uh, Topaz uh, incorporates that into the studio so I don't have to jump back and forth. But we'll make some basic adjustments here. And I want the shadows to open up just a little bit. You can see this was a, a uh, forest scene out in the southern Oregon, northern California, from a few years ago. And then we're going to duplicate this image. I'm going to get rid of everything else so we don't have it in the way. We have some more room. And it's done. And we're going to duplicate this image because I want that to be my base. And now we're going to create another one. And we're going to bring this one, the second one, into plugins. And this is going to go into lens effects. So by using the same photo and just making a copy of your adjustments, we can make some dramatic adjustments here, a changes to it. So I want to add more fog to this. I actually wanted to butt in if I can for just a minute while you're making those adjustments. Go right ahead. In the latest Go version, ahead. in the 1.11 version of Studio, I think it was actually set in like 1.7. We made it where if you're going to a plugin, it automatically duplicates for you, so you don't have to make that second copy. So if you send it to LendFX and then send it back, it'll automatically make another copy for you. Perfect. Just try Perfect. to save clicks. Thank you. <laughs> I don't like to upgrade just before the webinar, um, but I will after this for sure. Um, so this is going to um, create an effect for us here. And we're going to make some uh, adjustments here on the one that I made the duplicate of. And it's, it's labeled down here um, with the double zeros. So we're going to add the image in and grab that. And then we're going to put that in the background. And now we're going to use the luminosity mask. And we're going to make a mask transparency about 50%. And what I want is to get a little bit of the foreground with all of the Plug in it and the background that was nice and sharp and blend the two together. So we can click around till I find a very nice uh, spot where there's a, a nice transition between the two. And I think if you if I push the space bar, you can see where we started with the fogged image. And now we've got this. And I think I'm just going to make one last change in this, which would be. HSL, because that green seems to be a little heavy. And as you can see, it's a bit orangey. We're going to drop that down just a little bit. And we'll lighten this up just a hair. And 
Hello, sum. This is a nice way to get rid of a color cast. And green, yellow, green always has a little bit of yellow in it. I'll bring that up. And I'm going to add one little precision contrast here to bring a little bit of that back, but still maintain the soft, soft edge. So I like what the trees are doing. I don't want to go too, 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 too much. So I brought some of the trees back with the micro contrast, kept this from being completely blown out or too, too soft and brought back some of the detail in the uh, trees. So it gave it a nice um, ethereal look, if you will. You can turn the midtones down just a little bit. There we go. Now I'd be happy with this. Again, put this on high. If you guys want to follow Joe or sign up for, I know he showed a lot of the photos of the penitentiary. The penitent. I don't even know how to say that word. Penitentiary. Is that right? Prison. <laughs> the yeah, prison. the prison. There you go. <laughs> Trying to be too fancy. Um, uh, you've got that workshop coming up in November. Y'all can check out his website, JoeRudinPhotography.com, to learn more about that. Or if you're interested in any of his workshops coming up, you can also follow him on Facebook, facebookcom photography. Or if you have any questions, you can always contact him through his website or contact us at webinars at topazlabs.com. And you can sign up for upcoming webinars. I've still got a book a few. I'm waiting on some people to get back to me. But you can sign up for those at topazlabs.com forward slash webinars. Uh, Joe, as always, it's a pleasure to have you. I know um, a lot of these photos you'd normally spend a lot more time on. Uh, we only do have a, about an hour for this presentation, so you speed through a lot. But I'm always impressed with the variety of things that you're able to show. So thank you so much for that. I appreciate you. you sharing your work. I, I absolutely love doing these. So I, I hope I've uh, helped some people and um, stirred their curiosity. Just yeah. experiment. Have fun. Yeah, that's the greatest thing that I like about you, as you always mentioned. You know, it's it's experimentation. It's 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 not you're not looking for the perfect formula to make the perfect photo for every photo. It's always about what your taste is and what exactly you're trying to show with that art. So, yeah, I really appreciate okay. you taking the time to show that. And everybody who joined us today, I know we maxed out at a thousand people pretty much the entire time. Uh, thanks for sticking with us, and uh, we definitely hope to see you on a future webinar.